The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. As this sequel to the excellent Spy vs Spy opens, our black and white heroes parachute onto an island. Their mission is to retrieve a nuclear missile and rendezvous with a waiting submarine. Unfortunately, the missile is in three pieces, each buried somewhere on the island, and to make things even more interesting, the island's volcano will erupt in four minutes. The volcano is in the centre of the island, and that, along with gaps in the trees, form the game's rooms. This is part of a three-part miniseries, exploring the other titles from the Spy vs Spy games, which includes the original Spy vs Spy, and also Spy vs Spy 3 Arctic Antics, so be sure to stick around and check those out. I'll link them through at the end of this video. Anyway, back to the Spy vs Spy 2, the island caper, and three white specks in the sand show that something is buried there but you won't know what it is until you pick it up. If it's a trap, and it wouldn't surprise me if it is due to the nature of the game, then it's too late. In true comic book style, your spy is covered in sand which collapses into a heap as your opponent pauses for a brief giggle. As in the first spy game, the action takes place on a split screen display, showing the part of the island the spy is in. On the right is a panel of options, from which you can vary the number of players and level of difficulty of the game. To the left, each player has a trapulator, from which fiendish devices can be built. For example, a pit can be dug in the sand with the spade and then covered by twigs found on the ground. A bomb buried to look like an object, or a gun drawn and fired. Finally, a rope can be made into a trap by suspending it from a tree to the ground. Anyone standing in it will quickly be hoisted upside down to dangle from the treetop. Or, if those are too subtle for your taste in violence, you can always belt each other with clubs. The damage from any of these attacks is removed from your energy bar, although this can be replenished by resting. If it reaches zero, then your spy is replaced by a gravestone. Life seems to be even tougher in Spy 2, as they have to avoid all sorts of natural hazards as well as the man-made ones. These include quicksand, which costs energy to get out, and sharks from which there is no escape. I found Spy 2 to be just as good as the original, and a challenging and fun game against both computer and human opponents. If you enjoyed the original, then you'll love this. If you haven't played either of them, Play both, immediately. Spy vs Spy 1 at the Embassy introduced a revolutionary split-screen two-player concept and pretty decent graphics. The sequel, Spy vs Spy The Island Caper, retains much of the flavour of the original but adds to the player's options. Again, the screen is split into three parts. The top and bottom half show the current locations of the black and white spies, and indicators at the sides show their status and the weapons they're using. The aim of the game is to find a secret weapon hidden on the island, then to escape by a submarine. Stray too far through the scrolling scenery, and you'll end up in the sea. Speed is of the essence, because this is a volcanic desert island, and the volcano is due to erupt and cover the island in molten lava. As usual, the spies seem totally oblivious to the danger, and are more intent on each other's destruction, as they squabble for possession of the three parts of a missile. The most impressive features of the game is the simultaneous action screens. Again, you can lay traps for your opponent, but in the island caper, you have to create the traps yourself. To do this, you must use various tools, and whatever objects come to hand. Inventive as ever, the spies have discovered how to use the resources of the island to make destructive anti-personnel weapons. Coconut bombs, snares and pits complement the natural hazards of quicksand and shark infested waters and the unnatural hazards of swordplay and gunfire. Trap control is exercised by the skillful use of the trapulator, which tells you what objects you are carrying. 
your current strength and the time left before the eruption begins. All functions are controlled by your joystick and you have to be pretty dexterous if you are going to defeat the computer controlled spy. Once you have mastered the skills of the game, you are set about your business of finding the missile parts and the necessary components for setting booby traps to slow down or eliminate your opposing spy. I'm setting booby traps! As mentioned in the video I did on Spy vs Spy 1, I tried playing this with my mate again, but for some reason we couldn't really get into this one in the same way as the original, so the majority of the time I played this against the computer controlled spy. One thing I really did love was the traps on this game. For instance, you can create a pit once you find a spade, and can also even place a sharpened stake at the bottom. Snares can be rigged up to a palm tree if you find the rope to do it with, and the unsuspecting spy will hang upside down from the tree for several seconds if caught. To add to all the nastiness, bombs and snares can be set over buried missile parts. But you should always remember the indiscriminate nature of booby traps and remember to watch what your opponent is doing and where he is doing it. When all three parts of the missile are in your possession, you must locate your escape submarine which will surface off the island and then rendezvous with it by wading out to sea. This can be difficult in itself sometimes because you submerge and lose strength. Make sure you are healthy enough to attempt it and look out for the sharks. The Island Caper, whilst not being a fan from my friends, is still an extremely enjoyable game to play, and the superb cartoon graphics make it an excellent follow-up to its predecessor. What do you say? Thanks for watching guys. Please hit the like button and let me know your thoughts about Spy vs Spy 2 in the comments section. If you're enjoying the nostalgia and want to continue with me on this journey revisiting classic Commodore games just like this, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, check out the playlist, where you'll find more instant classics just like this. Hope to see you on other videos in the channel, and until then, bye for now.